Good morning. Is this Good on? morning. Is it on? I can't tell. It is. Oh, great. Welcome to Unity of Charlotte. My name is Carolyn Mahalko. I'm the executive assistant to Reverend Marty. I go between Florida and Charlotte. And when I came here, I was looking for a spiritual community. In Florida, I was a member at Unity of St. Petersburg. I found Unity of Charlotte, and I feel so blessed to be a part of this community. And we are blessed and honored that you all could join us today. Unity of Charlotte is here nurturing a deep, mature experience of God through the practice of unity principles. Simply put, we are here to love, grow, and serve. We believe spiritual community enhances our experience of life, making it richer, deeper, and more expanded. If you're joining us for the first time today, we want to welcome you, and any of the people with blue ribbons can assist you and answer any questions you have. And hopefully, if you are here for the first time, you got a welcome packet. If you didn't, they're out in the lobby. If you're in need of spiritual support, you can place a prayer request in our Ministry of Prayer box, which is in the lobby, in the foyer, or by going online. We have a lot of incredible things happening here at the church. If you missed Thursday's event with Scott Grace and John Mundy, we laughed for two hours. It was de delightfully divine. We had over 30 people here, and thank you, Jim, for bringing them to us. We appreciate it. Now for some announcements. I have five. I'm going to make sure I get this straight. First of all, we're very blessed to have Reverend Sally Robbins as our guest speaker today. I know that many of you have heard Reverend Sally before. She came to the ministry after 25 years in the corporate and entrepreneurial world. She's a contributing writer to Science of Mind magazine and has also served at the national level at the Centers for Spiritual Living. My second announcement is about John Stringer, who next Sunday will be our guest musician. He's also available in the afternoon from 12.30 to 4.30 for one-on-one -on -one personal guidance sessions. He allows divine energy to provide what is needed in the moment while sharing information received with others to assist in removing blocks, skewed perceptions, limited condition thinking, and the like. If you want to sign up for a personal session with John, it's 50 minutes long, and you can go online. There are, there are many. I, I ran a lot of these off. They're outside in the lobby. Okay. And also next Sunday at 12 o'clock noon, we will have a presentation from Pat Dre. Uh, the Compassionate Care Ministry consists of four groups, and Pat will be talking about the Ministry of Prayer. So if you're interested in that, please be here at 12 o'clock for that. The next one is on Friday, October 25th. The fourth Friday of the month is our sound bath and chakra meditation. I have not been to one yet, but Teresa Andrews tells me they are incredible. <laughs> so please, look, please attend that. And last but not least, on October 27th, which is two weeks from today, we will have as our guest speaker Greg Lavoie, the workshop, he will be, talk during the service, but he will also be here for a workshop from 12.30 to 3.30. And you're saying, oh, no, my gosh, it's not Potluck Sunday. We're going to feed you if you attend, okay? His workshop is entitled Callings in Search of Authentic Life. And he says it will be a dynamic dive into the question, what wants to emerge in your life now? Okay, that's it. And for our opening prayer... And the rest of the service, we have the very Reverend Sally Robbins. It's always so great to be back here. So at this time, we're going to go within. I invite you, if you're comfortable, close your eyes. Put your feet flat on the floor. Just get settled in your chair. 
and let's go within. Go within to that place of perfect peace, that place that knows all, sees all, and is all. That place within us that has unlimited vision, undying passion, and unswerving commitment. That place that never goes off center. That place that we can always return to when there are windstorms and hurricanes in our life. We can come back to this center point. This place that never moves, never changes. That place is the divine within. That holy spot. And in this moment, it is the holy instant. The only instant there is, the now, the ever-present now. And so we let go of whatever thoughts about how we had to travel through the rain this morning and what we have to do when we get out of here. Just let that all go. And become totally present. Feel your breathing going in and out. Knowing that the one who sent you is the one who is breathing. Feel the consciousness of this room that is ever lifted as we raise ourselves to a point of vibration that knows the perfection of all life. This place is an absolute joy, absolute power, absolute presence of God from which nothing and no thing can deter us from our good. For that is the name we also call our God, as Emma Curtis Hopkins says, God is good. And good is God. I know this from the very depths of my being, that God is here in this moment right now. No matter what is happening in any of our lives, some of you may have come in with some physical challenges. We know that God is in the midst of this. If there are financial crises going on in your life, God is in the midst of this too. If there are career issues, there is God right in the midst. Whatever is going on in our lives, we claim, we know, we express that God is a part of everything that we do and all of who we are. Oh, what a great, wonderful, secure feeling to know this. To know that we are held in the hand of God, that we are God DNA, the very vessel of God that is showing up on this planet as us. What a fantastic purpose to our life. And so I just give great thanks. Great thanks for the realization that all is indeed well in our lives, even if it doesn't look like it right now. We claim it. And for anyone in here who is having trouble with that thought, how can God be in the midst of this? Know that there are those of us who stand for you. We stand for you knowing the truth that God surely is in the midst of whatever pain, whatever challenge, whatever issue. There is God. I know this for you. And so I bless our time together this morning. I know that everything is unfolding for everyone's good in this room, for anyone who is watching Access 21, who, however they are seeing or hearing these words. God is in them. And God is in this. And so we simply let go, knowing as, as these words have been declared, the vibration goes before me and makes the way smooth. God is on the scene. God is here. God is now. And all is well. And together we say, and so it is. Amen.
Going to do our there we get there. Am I there? Mm-hmm. We're going to do our October affirmation. So together, today I courageously choose to prosper. I lovingly and gently release the past. I freely forgive myself and others. I joyously participate in the divine flow. Today I courageously choose to prosper. Thank you. You may be seated. So the book that I'm reading from today is called Letters of the Scattered Brotherhood. Um, It was published in 1948. There used to be a journal, uh, a a monthly publication that came out called this. And Mary Strong is the editor of this book, and she put several of these together. They're, They're all written by different people, and they are very new thought in their nature. So I'm going to read one of the ones from Letters of the Scattered Brotherhood. You can completely dissolve and blow blow away the cloud of anxiety if by your concentrated one-pointedness you keep aware of the power of spirit. Let there be an awareness so deep it is as if it were the center, in in the center of a block of granite, secretly hidden but held fast. The discomfort of fear will naturally discipline you to be one-pointed by the force of its attack. So, be one-pointed first. At, for, at this time, be determined, with all your forces, to be more aware of your inner spiritual companionship and protection. Stand aware of your invincible godhood in the Christ within. Then fear will recede and order will come in its place. But you must be not half awake mentally. I'm going to repeat that sentence again. But you must not be half awake mentally. This is a full-time job, isn't it? Spiritual, being spiritual. Those who win do not deviate. And so your energies at this life-creating moment must be used to keep yourself undisturbed in God's power. Do not let the moments go by you unlightened. You sometimes wonder why certain things are given you to bear. Anyone besides me ever wonder that? He says, do not, for it is a waste of time. Put your desire, your pent-up feeling, into the pure desire of being with that Christ within. And watch during the day the extraordinary waste of thinking that weakens you. It is a discipline of one's thoughts that matters, the turning inward and resting in that deep center where all is still and safe and sure. Great is the companionship and the peace of so doing. And be sure you know you are doing your best. Receive in quiet the assurance of your protection. And so now we are blessed with our own Lawrence Tolliver coming forward to do a special, special music presentation for us. What you got for us, Lawrence? Well, I appreciate it. Uh, appreciate your introduction, Reverend Sally. This is a song that we've all heard, but our own Greg James has uh, come up with some uh, lyrics that are befitting this month of October. So um, we have no problem with you thinking about money at this time. (laughs) 
None whatsoever. The moon belongs to everyone. The best things in life are free. But when you You'll find they require a fee Like crust in the pies We need dough to rise Like clover and beans We need that green Wow. Thank you. Woo! How do I follow that? That's, uh, that's remarkable. And you know, I, I actually thought that Bill Withers was in the house uh, in the earlier song when you were holding that note, Lawrence. That lovely day. You were holding that note, so. All right. <clears throat> Let me move this forward. Move that forward. There we go. So we're talking about value and worth. I don't know if there's anybody else in this room besides me that thinks about that on occasion. What am I worth? Anyone besides me ever think that? It's, it's the absolute delineation sometimes of who we might think we are. And part of our spiritual growth is learning that how much we're worth has very little to do with what we produce, how much we earn, all of those things that the Western world calls value, right? But simply by you showing up on this planet, you are worth the cattle on a thousand hills, as the scriptures say. There's a story that I want to share that talks about that. And a young man went to a wise man in his village. He was very upset. And he said, I, I, I'm just really, really uh, uh, trying to understand some things. And you're a wise person. And I need to get your sage wisdom about this. I've come to you because I feel so worthless. And I don't want to live anymore. Everyone around me tells me I'm a failure and I'm a fool. You've got to help me. Please, I'm begging you, help me. The wise man glanced at him and said, I'm really busy right now. I'm sorry, but I possibly can't help you. I've got a really urgent matter to take care of. He went back to his work and then he went, wait a minute. 
if you can help me get this work done, then maybe I can help you. Would you agree to help me with that? And the young man said, absolutely, of course. He was a little bitter that the man wasn't like jumping right in and helping him, but he said, you know what, I'll, I'll be there. Great, said the wise man. He took off from his fingers a ring with a beautiful gem. He says, take a horse and go to the market, and I want you to go to all the merchants there and anyone there that, you, that will talk with you and see how much they'll give you for this ring. And I really want you to make sure that you don't take anything less than a gold coin. I really want you to make sure, try to get as much as you can, but don't agree to anything less than a gold coin. So go now to the marketplace, come back as soon as you can. The young man took the ring and he rode away. He started going up to all the villagers, the merchants there in the, in the marketplace. He said, here, I've got this ring. How much would you give me for it? And they all looked at it and said, wow, that's a beautiful ring, but nobody would give him anything anywhere close to a gold coin. One older merchant kindly explained that a gold coin is too high a price for such a ring, and the most he would ever get for it would be a silver or a bronze coin. Well, when the young man heard that, he was really distraught because he felt like he'd let the, the wise man down. So he remembered he wasn't supposed to take anything. After offering it to over 100 people, he, he finally said, you know what, I, I, this, is, this is useless. I've got to go back and tell the man this. He says, I, I wasn't able to sell your ring. I'm really sad, but I, I couldn't do it. No one was willing to pay me a gold coin for it. I could have gotten a silver coin, but that's not what this ring is worth. And the wise man said, now that's the important point, my son. That's the important point. Before trying to sell a ring, you have to find out what it's worth. And who can know better than a jeweler? Go to the jeweler in that village and find out how much that ring is worth. Don't sell him the ring, just come back and tell me what he says. So the young man gets on his horse again, he rides back into town, he goes right to the jeweler, and the jeweler carefully looked at it, and then he weighed it on the scale, and he turned to the young man and he said, this is a really beautiful ring, but tell your master right now that I can't give any more than 58 gold coins. If he waits, I can give him 70 gold coins to compensate for him waiting. 70 gold coins, the young man was so, so excited. He's like, wow. He laughed and he raced back to the wise man. The wise man listened to what happened and he said to him, remember this young man, you are like this ring, precious and unique. And only a real expert can appreciate your true value. So why are you wasting your time going to random people, asking them what you are worth? That's a good one, isn't it? Because when we spend our time going to this person and that person, or maybe someone that we used to have a relationship who thinks that we're not all that in a bag of chips anymore, <laughs> that we are not worth that, guess what? We accept that, don't we? When that is not the truth of who we are. The truth of who we are, you can only get that from that place within that knows your uniqueness, your, your gifts that only you can give to this world. And yet, so, how many times, I know in my own life, I've taken the word of somebody else that told me I was less than what I thought I was worth. That is a really valuable lesson, isn't it? A really valuable lesson to understand that no one has the right to tell me how much I'm worth. I get to determine what that is. It's between me and my God, and that's it. And that is so easy to say, isn't it? <laughs> and so much harder to live. So much harder. So we're talking about worth today and value. Well, I want to tell you about a wonderful little town. This is Wallace, Idaho. It's a little town up in northern Idaho, Way, way up there. It's a mining town. And back in 2004, there were a group of people who were in a bar. Because I guess that's what they do in the evenings in Wallace, Idaho. <laughs> they were having a drink in the bar. 
And somebody in the group said, you know what? I think this is the center of the universe. And everyone in the bar agreed with him. This is the center of the universe. They went out to the main street. There's now a sign indicating where the center of the universe is. <laughs> and they went to the manhole in the center of the main street and said, this is, they, they christened it. This is the center of the universe. Now, they have since put this special manhole cover there that has the north, south, east, and west. And those initials in between the, um, the directions are the initials for the four mining companies that are very prevalent there. But they declared that they were center of the universe. Now, the mayor then finds out about this and says, you know what, we are the center of the universe. <laughs> so he <clears throat> makes a proclamation that they indeed are Wallace, Idaho, the center of the universe. And he said, we know this because we're basing this on the ancient Greek ideas in probabilism. If you can't prove something isn't, then it is. <laughs> That's a good way to look at things, right? If you can't prove this isn't the center of the universe, then it is. It is. So Wallace became the center of the universe, and every year in September, they have a proclamation again, declaring that Wallace is indeed the only place to be. And people come from miles around to take selfies next to the manhole cover, and it's all over the web. Wallace now has made a name for itself. What a, you would think, what a great marketing idea, right? But what I want you to take from this is they declared that this is the center of their universe. This, this is the center of your universe. Can I get an amen to that? Amen. The spiritual community here of which you have declared, this is my home. This is where I'm fed. These are my peeps, the people who get me. My tribe, the people that I know, will lift me up when I need to be lifted. This is the center of my universe. And so as you do declare that, spoken or unspoken, that you are here to commit that this indeed is your center of your universe and you are making sure that your center, your center, your church, your community is thriving because you value this. We put our money where we value things, right? We value the opportunity to come here week after week and learn and grow and be together. There's something to be said for that. I know if I'm not spiritually anchored, my week doesn't go as well as I would like it to be. Anybody else with me on that? Doesn't Sunday kind of set you in the right frame of mind to keep going and moving through your week? And we're all doing our own spiritual work, but there's something about coming together as community. There's something about being with a group that knows your potential even when you don't. And I know that the days that I don't feel like coming, like when it's raining outside and cold and dreary, well, it's not really cold, but <laughs> cold enough for Charlotte, right? Those are the days that I need to be here <laughs> when I don't feel like it because that's when I need my lifting. That's when I know that I'll hear just the right thing from somebody, not even necessarily from the platform, but someone will smile at me, someone will say something, someone will let me know my worth simply by acknowledging the Christ within me, that phrase namaste the divine within me honors the divine within you there's something very tangible about that when we are in the midst of our tribe and when we know that there's a place for us to come even in times of turmoil and strife this is the place that I know I can find refuge 
This is the center of your universe, of our universe. I will include that myself. Voltaire said, God is the circle whose center is everywhere and circumference nowhere. I love that phrase because there is no spot where God is not, right? So I know that even if there's terrorism going on somewhere in the world, and it doesn't take us very long to find that, right? There's, God is in the midst of that. And that there is something about us coming together and lifting our consciousness that makes a difference in this world. I recently was prompted to pull off of my bookshelf Power Versus Force by David Hawkins, which is an incredible book. And I've since read all his books. They're all on my shelf. Power Versus Force came out in 1995. I read it back then. And basically, David Hawkins, who lived in Sedona, he's since transitioned, David Hawkins determined how you could measure consciousness in the world. And he found a way using kinesthesiology, you know, where you, you push your arm. And he found a way to measure not only an individual's consciousness, but even concepts like freedom, joy, sadness, grief. He could measure the consciousness of a country, of a religion. And it went anywhere from zero to 1,000. And so people like Jesus and Buddha, Muhammad, were, of course, near 800, 900. But he said the average in the world today is at 207. Of course, this is 1995 when he wrote this. It might be higher now. But 207 is the average, meaning that the vast majority of the world is far below 200. But those of us who are 200 and above, because we have the vibrational frequency to pull up the rest of the world. Are you with me on that? We, as the, we are pulling up the rest of the world, we pull up that vibration that might be really low down here like terrorism or suicide bombers or whatever. We are pulling that up. And so our work is so important. Our work here in this building, in this community is so important. And he said, once you go, even go like over 200, 300, it's not like, oh, you go up 100 points. That one from 200 to 300 is like 30 times higher. 300 is 30 times higher than 200. Logarith Logar yes. Say that again, Nick. Logarithmic. Logarithmic. Yes. Easy for you to say. <laughs> <laughs> but that's the idea, that the more we are working on our own conscious being, our spiritual self that says, I am here to be a vessel of love and peace, boy, we are changing the world without even knowing it. I once heard Michael Beckwith, who was, he was the one who turned me on to this book back in the 90s, and he, he uh, said, the thought I have right now is actually influencing the man on the other side of the world who's thinking about stealing something. And because I'm thinking about love and peace, he goes, you know, I'm not going to do it. That's the power of this. And rather than force, hey, let's go start a war with somebody, power is lifting that vibration and knowing the truth about us all. That there are no, there is no duality. There's no others. We're all one. And what I do to somebody else, I do to myself. So when we are... We know that God, God is the circle whose center is everywhere and circumference is nowhere. Why would I even think a thought about somebody else? Because that's God. God's there. There is nothing stopping me from knowing the truth about my brothers and sisters. Thomas Troward says, my, center is a, my mind is a center of divine operation. The divine operation is always for expansion and fuller expression, and this means the production of something beyond what has gone before. Something entirely new, not included in past experience, though proceeding out of it by an orderly sequence of growth. He goes on. Therefore, since the divine cannot change its inherent nature, it must operate in the same manner in me. Consequently, in my own special world, of which I am the center, it will move forward to produce new conditions, always in advance of any that have gone before. 
God only is working in expansion. God doesn't detract. God doesn't contract. God is expansion and forward movement. And as I stand in this room today, this community is in forward movement. Would you agree with me on that? Yes. I, that was a little paltry. Would you agree with me on that? Yes. Because that's what it takes, is the commitment that this is forward expansion and that we're making such a difference in this world here. This work is so vital. This work is impactful, not just in Charlotte, but in the world. There is nothing more important than growing our spiritual consciousness. No job, no relationship, nothing. That's a little harsh to say sometimes when I say that. I hear that, I say that aloud. And yet I know that my advancement as a spiritual being enhances any job and any relationship I'll ever be in. Are you with me? You and I have taken on something here. Something here. See, Unity's been around for, what, 40 plus years? This, un this Unity of Charlotte? It's a center of divine operation. Think about the, the thousands of people that have come through here who have been changed who have said yes to their dreams when the world was telling them no. That's what we're doing. You can come here and know the truth of yourself. So what is that worth to you to know that you have this wonderful place, this sacred place that you call your spiritual home? One of my board presidents several years ago, I've pastored three different churches, and one of my board pres presidents uh, got up during, their commit, uh, to, during our commitment month, and he told a story about how he grew up Methodist. And he said, our family went every Sunday, there, we sat in the same pew, because that was like the assigned pew, you know, <laughs> so, you know how people get kind of, this is my pew. And the whole family would be there, and he said the plate would come down, and I would watch my father throw in a dollar or two. And I would think to myself, now he's a young boy when this is happening, he said, I would think to myself, Wow, for a dollar, we get all of this. <laughs> we get real, a really nice building. We get a minister. We get this wonderful choir. All for a dollar. Wow, that's a great bargain. And he goes on to say that when he then became a member of a church board, he realized it takes more than a dollar. And he said, I, now I understand, he said, I work with the budget because that's my job on the board is to make sure that we are thriving and in the, on, on the, um, the plus side, in the black. And he said, I understand what it takes to do my part to make sure that this community is strong and is thriving. And every time I've heard him t say that story, it would just remind me that I own this place. I'm an owner here, as each and every one of you are. And as co-owners, we are saying, yes, this is where I put my value. This is where I put my worth. I know that I can, I can commit to this. This is what it takes to run this church. One of the last times I was here, I don't know if it was the last time or the time before, Someone came up to me afterwards, and they purposely waited until most people were gone. And they came up to me in the lobby. And they said, I'm so glad I was here today. They were a new person. They had never been before. But they pulled me aside so that we could talk privately. And they said, I wasn't sure I wanted to stay on this planet any longer. And she said, I heard you talk. And I realized I wasn't done yet. And I realized that I had things that I had to do. And this place helped me wake up. Wow. Yeah. I, I get God bumps still thinking about that. that. And she didn't say what had been said. or It didn't really matter, did it? But somehow she had been awakened. Her soul had been stirred by the vibration of unconditional love in this room and the, the smiles 
the hugs, whatever she received that morning convinced her that life was worth living. You have that power, my friends. It's in your hands to continue to create this space that allows people who are at the end of their rope to say, you know what? There's more here. There's more that I can give. There's more that I can do. I can show up, and I can be the light that I'm meant to be. That's all that Spirit is ever wanting us to do, is to show up and do what we came here to do. See, this church is a beacon on a hill. Literally, (laughs) we're on a hill. And it's a light that is shining. And somebody may be driving by and go, you know, I just feel like going in there. Don't really know why. There is an attraction that is happening. We don't proselytize. We don't go out and, you know, flood the neighborhood with flyers. We attract. Because we know that love always attracts itself, right? Love is always open and an open door. So the time is now, folks. I know that Reverend Marty has started the commitment campaign. If you've not had a chance to turn in your commitment card, I really encourage you to think about that. If that's something you feel called to do, because this is the center of your universe. This is the place that you call home. The time is now. The time is now. Lauren Michaels, producer of Saturday Night Live, says, I say it every week. We don't go, beyond, we don't go on because we're ready. We go on because it's 1130. <laughs> That's a good reason, right? They, they, they only have so much time to rehearse. We only have so much time. So I invite you, if you're feeling that stirring within your heart, to pull yourself up to a place of ownership, of being a part of the vision of a place that really makes a difference in Charlotte. Today is your day. I'm going to end with a story that I was told about another minister. His name is Robert McDonald. He is a a New Thought minister in Yorba Linda, California. And a woman in his congregation had had a stroke. So he was called to the hospital. And he she was in a coma. She could not speak. She was unconscious. She's lying in the bed. So he pulls a chair up next to her bed. And he leans over and he starts whispering in her ear. And this is what he said to her. I'm talking to your subconscious. Your body knows how to heal itself. Your body has healed cuts and bruises. Your body has healed broken bones. And your body knows how to heal this stroke condition. At that moment, her eyes flew open as he said that. He worked with her for a little while, and then she closed her eyes and went back into the coma again. He wasn't discouraged, though. He knew that something had stirred within her. Something had responded to his spiritual call to her. She stayed in that coma for three days. And on the third day, she woke up. And it was as if she had never had a stroke at all. Her doctors were dumbfounded. There was no scarring. There was nothing that would have been any evidence that she'd had a stroke. But because he stood strong with her and knew the truth about her as her own center of divine operation, she was the center of his universe in that moment, knowing the truth about her, she responded. And the doctors to this day don't have a clue what happened. You, you are the center of your universe. If this is your universe, let's take care of it. Let's commit to it. Let's know the truth about it, that we are a beacon on a hill, and nothing will ever change that. We are calling in those who need help. We are calling in those who want to be lifted up. We are calling in those who say, I've been looking for a spiritual home. I had no idea unity even existed. We're calling them all in. The time is now. Are you with me? A few of you are. Are you with me? Yes. Okay. Let's take that into prayer. Hmm. Father, Mother, God, we are just so grateful. 
We are grateful for the opportunity to be the vessels of love and kindness and compassion, the vessels of generosity, the vessels of inspiration, the vessels of a smile. Whatever is ours to do, we are committing today to do it. And so I know that each and every one of us is hearing that call from within right now, tuning in to that divine radio station that's always playing within us. It's always playing. It's always lifting us up. It's always holding the truth of who we are. It is changeless. Nothing, nothing ever knocks it off the air. That radio station is always tuned into the God within. And so I know that each and every one of us is tuned to that vibration right here and right now. Even those who are watching, even those who are listening, might not be in this very room. It doesn't matter. That radio station is playing within you as well. Because the truth about me is the truth about you. And so I know each and every person here today gets to experience God as them. We're showing up as God as us. We laugh, we cry, we are humans having a spiritual experience. And so I give great thanks for this tribe that has come together. I give great thanks for those who have said yes to a higher commitment and to a chance to be an owner in this spiritual community. I give great thanks for all that is and all that is yet to be for Unity of Charlotte. It is a great future. It is a fantastic future. A future so bright we got to wear shades. It is the time. The time for all of us to say yes to that which is and that which is to be. And together we say, and so it is. This is another one of those Greg James uh, uh, modifications. He's got some beautiful <laughs> lyrics here. Uh, and the name of the song reflects uh, what is on our hearts to deal with. Money. And if you... Uh, Look closely at our doo-wop choir. <laughs> they have them sunshades on. <laughs> Do you think? Come on. Come on. <laughs> Do it. Monthly mortgages do We need money That's what we want That's what we want That's what we want Spirit gives you everything that's good But if you don't want preaching in the woods We need your money Listen to me. 
first. Y'all didn't know we had a Broadway thing going, did you? <laughs> <laughs> Well, we did say our future was so bright, we had to wear shades, right? <laughs> right. Woo! Oh, thank you, Lawrence. Let's give the round another applause. <laughs> and just to be clear, that's all tongue-in-cheek. They're not turning off the lights. But, <laughs> but if, we could, if we could send prayers to Duke Energy instead of money, that would be great. We, we've tried, but they, they kind of like to get a check. So so that's why we're asking you to take part in this. All right, so I think we're at that point now. Let's all stand. We're going to do our prayer for protection and then do our closing song. Woo! Lots of energy in this room this morning. Okay, so let's all say it together. The light of God surrounds us. The love of God enfolds us. The power of God protects us. The presence of God watches over us. Wherever we are, God is, and all is well.